what is this? Hit exclamation Kentucky in the chat. And, uh, oh, no. And that'll tell you a little bit more. Kentucky Route Zero, it's a game that ha I have wanted to play since I saw the first screenshot. Oh, my God. Uh, first screenshot I ever saw. It looks beautiful. Speak of the devil. It looks beautiful. It's point and click. Woo! I can't believe you haven't seen Parasite. You should get canceled for that. Cancel me, bitches. Diesel engine rumbles. There's a dog and there's a truck. Oh, does the audio sound okay, guys? Dude, this sounds great. Wait, Ryan hasn't watched Parasite? I have not watched Parasite. Indeed. Equus Oils. We have ourselves a, uh, a horse head. A horse head here. Should explain the Equus. Wouldn't it have an I in it, though? E-Q-U-I-S? Uh, okay, W-A-S-D does not do anything. Scroll wheel does not do anything. There's a truck driving by. I like the sound of that. This truck idling over here makes me so hard. Makes me makes my heart so happy. Makes me so hard. We have a dog and a truck. Has Ryan still not watched Call Me By Your Name? I don't know what you guys are talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Huh? All right, dog. An old hound in a straw hat. Both have seen better days. A hat. The hound is wearing a straw hat. Equus's horse, if I remember correctly. That's what I said. But Equus does not have an eye. Okay, good. Good to know. It's like equine does. Um. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Truck. Let's see what the truck has to say. There's a person sitting in a bench right here. A moving truck rumbles softly to itself. Painted on its side are the words Lisette's Antiques Furniture. Glassware Curiosities. Lisette's Antiques. Lisette. What a name. Curiosities. Dude, speaking of the sound, I just want to... I just want to... I just want to listen to the sound of this truck for the next many, many, many days. Also, I want to keep putting my cursor on this X button. Ooh, I should click on stuff. Okay. Um. Oh, oh. Okay, we have a, uh, check this out. That's if I if I do that, that's where it goes. We have a highway. Yo, it's a little horseshoe. That's weird. And also cool. Highway. Look at this dog, this thin little dog. Rebecca's gonna look up Parasite. Duck is disappointed in me. Highway. Horses in Kentucky. Hi, Eclipso. An interstate highway, 65, running from Alabama up to just shy of Chicago. It ought to be quitting time in this part of Kentucky, but the daylight just won't shake. The sun just won't go away. So far, this is exactly, exactly what I hoped. Oh my god. Can I jump into the water? I don't know that I can jump into the water. Look at our dog. Hey, dog. It has little big, it has big droopy ears. Can you explode the gas station? I don't know that I should. Can you pet the dog? I'll try. I cannot pet the dog. It does not appear. There's a tractor going by. All right, let's go over and talk to this dude. How are we, Eclipso? Happy Monday. Happy February, by the way. Uh, attendant. I can either look at or speak to. Look at. It's an old man with glasses. Joseph sits between gas pumps in a Queen Anne armchair. His hair is gray and his glasses darkened. Let's talk to him. 
Damn, did you hear that wreck? Truck full of bottles, I don't know, beer bottles, whiskey? Lost a tire or something. Spilled booze and glass all over the interstate. What a mess. I hope they don't come down here looking for anything. We blew a damn fuse and it's all shut off. Did I hear a dog? What's your dog's name? His name is Homer. Her name is Blue. Nope. Oh, I have options. Oh, okay. What a great Kentucky accent. All right, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. We have actual Kentucky residents slash, uh, slash people who are very familiar with Kentucky in the chat currently. Um, yeah. Mars, did you just look that up? His name is Homer or her name is Blue. Let's go with Blue. I like that. Blue's the better. Yeah, yeah. Blue's the better. Blue's clues, by the way. Her name is Blue. Blue sounds like a sweet old hound. I used to know a dog like that. Hey, here's some jerky for Blue. I made it myself. Didn't turn out too well, but I bet a dog will eat it. Getting late, right? I can feel the sun on my neck. I bet it's just a few feet off the horizon. Blue like bluegrass. Homer the Simpson. Homer the writer. Homer the simp. I've been driving all evening looking for... Oh, wait, no. This is my other, other guy. I've got a delivery to make on dogwood, but I'd rather watch the sunset. Yeah, it's the truth. You've got to stop and breathe in that road. I bet while you're out driving, you just let your eyes wander up the tree line and just... Well... I'll bet you're more of a poet than old Joseph. AKA himself. Do you like poetry? I have to ask the man. I have to ask the man if he likes poetry. Do you like poetry? Oh, I just like to listen to the TV. I used to do a lot of poetry on the computer. But I don't have the ear for it lately. Listen, you and Blue would have been driving up and down 65 all night. Dogwood Drive is on the other side of, well, to get there, you've got to take the Zero. The Zero is a tough route to find, but you can use my computer to look up directions. You have to head down into the basement, reset the circuit breaker first. I'll be happy to have those whining lights back up anyways. It's too damn quiet out here. Basement doors back there in the office. Appreciate your help, friend. Oh, and here. Take this lamp. It gets dark. He is a talker. This is our first little quest, though. Ooh, what's these? What is these? Oh, look at that lamp. Look at our dog. Blue. What's this button do? Oh, that's the lamp on and off. Okay. Joseph, they attained it. What is a these? Is these a cheese? What What is a these? I have the volume way turned up on my end. I hope it's okay for you guys. I'm really enjoying the... The sounds. What is a these? There's a house up on that hill. Let's go inside first. Just regular inside? Nope, I just have to click on basement? Okay. Okay. Basement it is. Ooh! Oh my god. Okay, there's a person here. There's a sign here. Turn the thing off just to scare, scare us real quick. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Oh, no. With banjos and, uh, and basses and stuff. What's the sign say? A dusty, rusty sign is bolted onto the wall. These are the rules. One, no open flames near the gasoline. Two, no consumption of beer or spirits on the premises. Three, in case of sudden darkness, do not panic. Relax. Count backwards from five. Four, strictly limit time spent in the basement to fewer than three minutes of every hour. The fuck's going on in the basement? That's the same sign, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. I'm going to turn the audio up real quick. Do you guys think if I went back to full screen, it would, it would fuck up? Do you want me to try? 
gonna try it. I have full screen. I am dropping frames. Shit. Shit. All right, no full screen. <laughs> What's this way? Nope. What's this way? Nothing. All right, cool. Let's talk to these guys. You look fine to me. I didn't see much of a difference. I saw my frames drop, though, immediately. Basement people. Let's look at the basement people. Emily, Ben, and Bob sit in folding chairs behind a worn card table. Papers, oddly shaped dice, and highway maps cover the tabletop. Let's talk to Emily, Ben, and Bob. All right, no full screen. Conway clears his throat. <clears> throat> <clears throat> oh, sorry. Didn't know there was anyone down here. Emily. Did you hear something? Bob. Uh, no, I was... Sorry, I was looking at the rules again. Ben. It gets easier as you go. Look, you said you rolled a five, right? That means you get to pick up your marker and move it anywhere on the map. Bob. So it's your turn now. I don't remember what voice I did for Bob. Right? Ben. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Where'd you put that 20-sided die? Emily. I don't see it. Did you drop it? Uh, it should be easy enough to find. It glows in the dark. They, what are they doing spending so much time down here for? You weirdos? Can I try talking to him again? By the way, are you running the game with integrated graphics or high performance NVIDIA processor? Is that an actual question? I have no idea. They're playing D&D. &D. It looks like they're playing D&D. &D. Conway clears his throat. No response from the... T I just need to get by you for a minute. <clears throat> Did you lose something? I think it rolled down off to the left there, but I don't see it. Well, I'm not going to go looking for it. It's too dark down there. One of you go down and get it. I'll just s study the rules here. I think I'm going to go for it. I'm finding it for him. Where is it? 20 sided die is a dead giveaway. I've already read your sign. I've already read your sign. What the fuck are they doing just sitting down here in the dark anyways? I don't see it. Conway taps his foot. If I can hit that breaker box, I can get the lights back. Well, what kind of game is that? I think you were right about the instant crisis rolls. There's a whole separate table of them in the back. I don't like that rule anyway. It's not fun. It's just random and frustrating. The, ran the randomness is what makes it realistic, Bob. It glows in the dark. They said it glows in the dark. Should I turn the lamp off and just see? Oh, okay. I have to turn the light off while I'm down there. Okay. Conway picks up the glowing 20-sided die and expects it. Inspects it. The number five is facing up. It's just a small piece of plastic, but it has a reassuring, almost comforting weight. He places the object in his jacket pocket. Chad, can you guys actually see the... Uh, the text okay on screen yeah you can yeah Rack, I don't know man I don't know I can deal with I can look at that another time but can't do it right now Text is good. Cool. Good. Uh, they're gone. So, uh, they're gone. 
Folding chairs are arranged around a worn card table. The chairs are empty. The surface of the table is bare. I can either keep the die or, or put it down. I think I'm going to keep it. Over here and reset the breaker. Ah, this is sketch looking. Oh, buddy. Whose basement looks like this, by the way? You know? Whose basement looks like this? Oh. Wow. The sound. I really want to pet the dog. It's not letting me pet the dog. Chat, this is not a thing we're going to do. We're not going to have me check my DMs from each of you individually while we're streaming. It's just not a thing we're going to do. There it is. Just listen to those lights whine. Yep. Well, uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. There were some people down. There's like two options, right? There's like option number one is like, listen, the world's weird. The world's weird, but I'm not interested. I'm just interested in doing my shit. Option two. God, the audio is so fucking loud. Is, uh, I'm interested in why things are weird. I'm interested. There were some people down in your basement playing some kind of game, but they're gone now. In the basement? No, I don't think so. Maybe that lamp light was playing tricks on you, huh? Strange things happen underground, especially in the dark. So, computer's in the office. You're looking for Marquez. She knows her way around these roads. She'll get you to the zero. Password is, uh... Damn, I usually just feel it out. Muscle memory, you know? Kind of long, kind of like a short poem, I think. One of those short poems that really sums it all up. You'll figure it out. What a very helpful man. Audio, my friend. We should probably go back down. Did that just say ephemera? Five dog would drive. Okay, cool. And a, and a dice. Can roll the dice. Regan has redeemed. Check your po check your posture for 100 channel points. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, we're going back in. This is D and D in it. I think it's D and D. It was imaginary, fic fictional D and D though. Conway taps a key, waking the computer from its reverie. User. Joseph. Password. Wheels slide loose, the stars drop away, where I talk and listen to him talking. What's our gut tell us here? Seems like a catastrophe, seems like a epiphany, seems like a lack of connection. I'm going to go with the epiphany one, feeling vibe. The stars drop away. Nobody saw the accident. It's late. The moon throbs. Brax into it. Brax says it's time for me to not watch the stream and to buy the game. Dude. I just have a feeling about this one, man. I don't know. You ever get the feeling when you're looking at a game? Like, I saw the first screenshot. This is what I mean. I saw the first screenshot and I was like... It seems like me. It seems like me. I don't know what that means, but it seems like me. It's late. The moon throbs. I don't like throbs because it gets all sexual, you know? It's late. You just breathe road, the lights whine, or it'll only get later. That seems very cynical to me. Maybe the lights whine. It's more intriguing than I expected. I'm very interested in where this is going. Me too. I think we go lights whine here. Stars drop away. It's late. The lights whine. Maybe it's just you breathe road. You just breathe road. 
I like that. Password accepted. I have a feeling no matter what we chose there, it was going to be okay. Joseph shouting. How's it going in there? Figuring it all out? Sure you are. Messages. Address book games. Ah, do we have to check what the games are? Rebecca says, meanwhile, I'm so tired my eyes sting and I can't focus properly. It feels like I'm missing out. Oh, Rebecca, I can say everything out loud for you. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Tub says Adam smells some D&D &D and gets his senses all tingled, all tingling, all tingling. I've been trying to say as much of it out loud as possible. Uh, we'll check games. Games is not real. Games is not real, huh? I love that. I love that a lot. Uh, let's go address book. I don't want to, I don't want to dick around in this guy's messages. That's not my, that's not my goal. Address book. Dogwood drive is what we want. Or. He said, he said type Marquez. I'm going to type dogwood drive first. No, 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 let's do the zero. Address, the zero is not real. Address book. Dogwood drive. Dogwood drive is not real. Let's check Marquez. Marquez residence. 100 Macondo Lane. Head northeast on 65. Turn left as soon as you see that ugly tree that's always on fire. Look for the barn at the base of the mountain there. Can't miss it. Ugly tree that's always on fire. Got it? Oh, wait, wait. Joseph says, got it? Out there on Macondo somewhere, right? Yeah, that's it. Hey, look, while you're down there, I loaded that old TV of mine into your truck. I borrowed that thing from Weaver Marquez a couple of years ago. Now that the power's all weird over here, I can't pick up anything, but status, static and public access anyways. She was always more of a reader. Maybe she'd want it back at home. It's a nice TV. I love, I love completely fucking up people's voices in games like this. It's so much fun. Like when we did uh, Inmost, and I did different voices. Let's go pet the dog. Do I have to hit P for pet? P for pet does not do it. Oh, shit. Spacebar brings out the die. Blue? Conway scratches behind Blue's right ear. How's it going, Blue? What do you think of this place? It's odd. I never noticed it driving by. Can I, we could give him a treat. Let's give him a treat. How about a treat? Here's some jerky from the gas station attendant. Reminds me a bit of your old man, Ira. Hmm. Hmm. Wait, is Macondo a reference to 100 Years of Solitude with Gabriel Garcia Marquez? What's Macondo? Is it the name of the city? Tubber, I think you're probably onto something here. He's a bit odd, isn't he? He reminds me a bit of your old man Ira. Let's check that one. He reminds me a bit of your old man Ira. He was a good man, a good boss. It's the name of the town where things happen. Gotcha. Alright, so Ira is our old boss and the dog's old. Nope. Nope. Keep doing that on accident. I just want a pet. Let's talk to Joseph real quick. Ira means rage in Spanish. Ooh. Sun's gone down. You and Blue better get on that road if you're going to make your delivery. Let's hit the fucking road then, Jack. Don't you come back. Equus Oils, get me out of here. Truck. Conway has places to go. Conway takes a minute to think. Let's take a minute to think. Oh, all that does is delay. Okay, never mind. Conway has places to go. Equus Oils. Shit, where did it say to go? Oh shit, chat. Oh shit. 
All I remember is the thing about was on fire. Oh no. I don't know where I just drove. I don't know where I'm going. Cumberland Parkway? New Bowling Green Road? Louisville Road? Mammoth Cave Road? Yo, wait a second. Is that Indiana right there? On 65, Blaze says. Is this Indiana? If this is Mammoth Cave? Is all of this fictional? I've been to Mammoth Cave. This is like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. This is like very close to a lot of people that I know and very close to where I am. Brack bought it. If that's honestly, I think this is honestly it. The Marquez farmhouse. Hey, we found the burning tree. Yo, let's go. Okay. Yeah, there's 65. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let's check the uh, burning tree. Mammoth Cave Parkway. A, a tall black oak burns on a hill above the road. Seems seems very normal. Why'd you set the tree on fire? I did not. I did not. Mammoth Cave Parkway? Let's check if it's actually real. I mean, I've been to Mammoth Cave, and I think this is probably exactly... Holy fucking shit. Chat. This is like, this is crazy. I've been to this place in real life. It's just south of Louisville a little bit. It's between Bowling Green and Louisville. This is insane. Really quickly, I'm gonna do this. Okay, so Mammoth Cave right here. 70, 65. Cave City, Park City. Here would be the burning tree, right by Dinosaur World. Here's where the house is. This is crazy. I know, I'm trying so hard not to actually show any of my stuff so that it doesn't dox me. What lake is this? Barren River Lake. Okay. Anyways, uh, I'm freaking out. I don't know that it's 100% accurate. Yeah, I don't know that it is either, but it's got like... I heard based in, in fictitious Kentucky, but it's got like... Oh, shit. It's got the like shape, like this is all Mammoth Cave up here. That's crazy. It's weird. I'm freaking out. Marquez Farmhouse. Let's see what it has to see what it has to say. Act one, scene two. It's the menu screens that fuck me up, man. The menu screens make me drop frames. Marquez Farmhouse. Maybe they just copied the roadmap? Yeah, I don't know. If they based it on an actual mo roadmap place, you know? Ooh, okay. Lamp. A street lamp lights the base of a dusty path leading up the hill. Okay, so I, I just clicked the truck if I want to leave. Let's click on blue. Ryan, it's Marquez, not Marquez. Some Leviosa thing going on. All right. It's pretty dark out here, huh? Hmm. Hope I can borrow you a treat up there. We're taking blue with us, dude. Fuck no. Yeah, there's no way I'm going up there alone. Hell no, dude. There's no way I'm going up there alone. Wait, wait, Blue. Ah, come on. What are you doing? Blue! Blue? Blue doesn't want to come. Uh-oh. Yo. Some of the roads are named differently, it looks like. Uh, Eclipse of Success? Gotcha. There's the house. Ooh, a graveyard right here, too. Graveyard says, A family graveyard is set off to the side of the house. Headstones are inscribed with the surnames of the unfortunate. Nawakowski, Padilla, and Marquez. 
Mars says, all right, time, all right, you guys, time for class. I won't be out of class by the time you finish up, so I'll see you all soon. Mars, good luck in class. Much love. We'll see you very soon. Have fun. Good to see you. Okay, graveyard. There's a rocking chair here. There's an owl you can hear in the background. Blaze has class soon, too. What class do you have, Blaze? At the house. Do I go left at all? Can I go left at all? I can't go left. All right, cool. House it is. Go up the steps. Got some English class soon. Gotcha. Light the switch. Oh! I like her, her leggings. They're purple. I was just thinking what a lovely house we have. Do you like it? Have you been here before? Did you happen to see an owl? Sure, it's a nice house. I know. I like the large beams that run across the ceilings. I like to sit in the house and think of the hills and bluffs surrounding us. Like a... like a cradle. Rebecca says, I have class in about 12 hours. Rebecca says, I never have class again. Oh my god. I never have class. Used to be another house here. We had it destroyed, and we built this one. It was very expensive, and we got quite underwater. <laughs> Blaze says, if you're still streaming by then, I'll be back around 2.30. Sounds good. We should be we should be going until at least 3, so... Good to see you, Blaze. Have fun in English class. What do you do for work? Is it too difficult, or do you like it very much? I was once a mathematician. Are you looking for something in particular here? That's so many good questions. Which, which question are we going to answer? What do you do for work? I drive deliveries for a small antique shop. It's better than... Uh, uh, do you like it very much? It's better than being in a ditch. Are you looking for anything in particular? I'm looking for the zero. Uh, let's see here. Um, I drive deliveries for a... I drive deliveries for a small antique shop. I believe it's hard times for a small antique shop. Hard times everywhere, even out here on our little farm. My parents stopped paying the bank a while back. I shouldn't even be here, but I just stayed. I have some notebooks. I'm only a little bored. I might prefer to watch TV occasionally. I have a solution for that, actually. Joseph says you're too smart to watch TV. Actually, I have a TV here that I think belongs to you. Will you please set it up? Then I can explain to you how we get, how to get where you're going. The zero, I know. Tax fraud? I think she just hasn't... I don't know about tax fraud, but... uh. Just hasn't paid taxes. She's probably tried to be evicted, but they haven't done anything with the house, and so they've just she's just kept coming back. Set up a TV. Set up a TV. Ooh, we're wearing a blue hat. We got a close up there. We're wearing a blue hat, a jacket. So wait, I don't get it. What else are we wearing? Weaver's got glasses on. Ooh, this is pretty. Where are we going? What's our mission? Well, we're going to drive on Kentucky Route Zero, which uh, we don't really know a bunch more than that. Yeah, we're still figuring it out as we go. We're quote-unquote delivering antiques, but we were looking for Route Zero. We stopped at a gas station. He said to come talk to Weaver. That would help us find out where the where Route Zero is. She's going to tell us. Yep. It's kind of like, like Route 66. For those non-Americans, it's like Route 66 is like a traditional route across the West. Route Zero is just a fictional one for this game. Yeah, I can't click on anything but Weaver. That's not how it's supposed to look. You've made a mistake setting it up. Is it a foreign object to you? Which of your parents was it who wouldn't allow you to watch television? Ma thought she heard ghosts in the static. Dad thought it was radioactive. I know how to set up a TV. <laughs> I know how to set up a TV. Okay, I'm skeptical. You have it all backwards. I'm not surprised. Are you? Have you been paying attention? I don't think you have. It's time to start paying attention now, Conway. Look closely at the television. Okay. What's on the television? Rebecca called her an ungrateful bastard. I had to learn about uh, Route 66. Yeah, I don't know that everybody knows about it, but I, I wondered if people knew. Uh, let's see what's on the TV. It's 
It's making some crazy noises. We looked right past the TV towards the barn. There's horses right here. Two horses. Windmill. And this thing. Which might be. There's a thing that happens uh, in rural areas, which is you make a like patchwork kind of shape. And it becomes your, like, your, uh, and you hang it places, and it becomes, like, your family's, or your group's, like, uh, your family's, like, patch, almost. I think that might be what that is. Hey, hey, wake up! You spaced out for a minute there! The picture on the TV. Uh, what do you keep out in that barn? Used to be tools and feed, then books. Now I think it's mostly spiders. That TV's picking up the wrong signal. My cousin Shannon would know more about it. She fixes TVs for a living. Well, she used to. I think the new models are giving her some trouble. Your cousin? That's my father's brother's daughter, Shannon. We're about the same age. Well, used to be. She's older now. What the fuck? We're about the same age? Well, we used to be. She's older now. I love it. She has a workshop up north a ways by the lake, right where Peonia and Wax Road meet. Peonia and Wax. It's a big bait and tackle shop. She fixes TVs in the back. You like fishing? Honestly, I'm not convinced you should bother with the Zero. I'd much rather you find my cousin and fix my TV. I'll get you headed the right way. 65 North. Okay, we have to remember this. 65 North, take a ride at the Artificial Limb Factory. This is so dark and weird. The artificial limb factory. Nice to know you, Conway. Keep your eyes open, especially in the dark. I like her. Or we could go to the TV thing. Okay. Cousin was up near Peonia and Wax. Speed run it? Oh, but then we wouldn't get a chance to actually enjoy it. Where'd you go? Weaver. Weaver. Where'd you go? You go outside. Go walk around a bit here. Ooh, stove. A disused wood burning stove is set up in the one ash dusted corner of the room. It's cold to the touch. Okay. Ooh, it's got some 3D elements. Look, I can make him come forward. I can make him go back. Ooh. There's a sink here. An abandoned spiderweb stretches across the bottom of the saucepan. A skillet is seasoned with dust. I don't know that she's actually living here. Let's go outside. I don't think this woman's actually living here. I think she's a ghost. Wasn't there something right here? The owl. Let's check on the owl. Nothing. It's a spoopy ghost. It's a spoopy ghost. Brack bought the game. That's funny. Alright, let's get out of here. Wait, 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 wait. Go back up here. Are we going to see the name Weaver over here? The bed quilt ramblers play You've Got to Walk. A family graveyard is set off to the... Okay, no. Didn't say anything. It's a spoopy ghost. Spoopy ghost. This is really cool so far. Kona? This is so Kona. you're right. There's some horses out there behind the house. I just met this I just met the strangest lady. Kinda creep me out, blue. Just had a weird energy. That's not her fault, I guess. Some folks are just like that. Surprises redeem spoil neg for 2,000 points. Deal. I could do that. Uh, let's get out of here. Did you 
you guys hear the way that echoed? Oh my god. <sighs> that was so fucking cool. Uh, we have to find Peonia and Wax. Griderville. Jackson. Charlie Morin Highway. Dixie Highway. L and in Turnpike. Charlie Moran. I wonder where this thing is. Hey, Meg. Speaking of the devil, she's in the chat. Hi, Meg. How's it going? There's the edge of our map. Bacon Creek. Priceville. This is cool, dude. Nope, right here. Raider Hill. I don't know where I'm going. Is that a surprise to any of you? Cherry Spring. Meg, how's work? Union Light. All right, nothing's working. Rebecca says it's not really a surprise. I know, right? I'm, I guess it must be south. I don't know. You have an impeccable sense of direction. All right, motherfucker. I have a good memory. I need Peonia and Wax. Those are the two roads I need. Bon Iver Road. New Bowling Green. Maine. Wells. Green. Cumberland. Cleveland. Okay. Well, let's just go for the zero then. Uh, Brack says, game's done. Download. I'm going to hop off and play it. Sounds good, Brack. See, man. There was dragonflies right there. Meg says, uh, work is going. Uh, pretty much done at work unless something comes up. Headed to Target near work. Then I'm going to come home. Have some phone calls to make once I get home. Cool. Cool. Exciting. Let's see what the dragonflies are. The truck jerks toward the shoulder, nearly run off the road by a swarm of dragonflies. The wings beat briefly in the headlights and disappear into the night. Love that. Okay, so the factory should be right here. This is the factory. The creek runs alongside the highway and then turns toward a dirty brick building. A grinding drone from within the building is faintly audible from the interstate. Floodlights on the lawn illuminate smokestacks. At the edge of the building's parking lot, a large sign partly obscured by trees reads, A mare... Dot, 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 Tificial Limb Factory. So I wonder if the zero is this line. I can't tell. It said the next right, right? On ramp to the zero? Yeah, we found the zero. Act one, scene three. Elkhorn Valley. Elkhorn Valley. Hmm. All right. Well, Blue, how you doing? Conway brushes some dirt off Blue's hat. Take it easy, Blue. Rebecca, are you drinking a vanilla Coke? That does sound nice. You talk to Blue? Let's talk to Blue. How's it going, Blue? Huh, not sure that lady was right about the on-ramp to the zero being here. Or I could say, hey, you got something on your hat. Hey, you got something on your hat. Been digging in Lassette's flowers again. Just can't keep you out of there, can she? Mmm, the way Ira used to yell at you, you'd think he was losing his mind. Okay. So Ira does have some rage, like Tub was saying. 
Entrance. This seems sketch. Let's see what it's all about. What a weird, beautiful, lovely game so far. Act 1, scene 5. That was fucking quick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, it's a mine. Oh, shit. Elkhorn mine. Okay. Shannon speaks into the large brick cell phone held up to her ear. Shannon. We're controlling a different character now, chat. Controlling an entirely different character. Okay. Um. Yeah. What's, Shan what's Shannon's voice? I'm not very good with voices. Yeah. Yeah. We could make her southern or we could not. Well, what are y'all doing, screwing? Yeah, it kind of is an emergency. We'll do this one. It's a weird one. Phone, inaudible. I guess he can't kick me out for another week or two. Can I trust him not to just change the locks? Phone makes inaudible noises. Mm. Okay, so from the story so far, it seems like she has a breakup with the person, potentially. And uh, they're trying to stay... And, and it's like some danger, maybe. And and maybe trying to change the lock so we can't get back to her. Just, never mind. I have to go. Sorry. Shannon hangs up the phone, puts it away, and then I walk up. No work tomorrow, it says on that thing. Stranger. Oh, we've switched we've switched positions. Conway says, "Excuse me, ma'am. I saw the light was on, and I was looking for the on ramp." To Shannon says, "Are you here to kick me off the property, or do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in ghosts?" Back. I don't know what you. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Um. Well, let's see. I do believe a place can be haunted, if that's what you mean. Shannon says, what about a person? Can a person be haunted? Sure, I guess a person could. Sometimes I feel haunted myself. First off, I hear that. Shannon says, me too. Or, what haunts you? What haunts you? Conway says, uh, bad decisions, I guess. Wasted youth. Ha! Well, look. Here's what it is. I drive deliveries for a shop called Lysette's Antiques, and I'm out trying to finish this job. I didn't I didn't notice that, Breck. Uh, Mogi says KFC. KFC haunts me. KFC haunts you? That's a decision that haunts me. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I eat KFC. You're making a delivery to the mine? What kind of stuff are you hauling? Antiques, good stuff. Lassette has a sharp eye for the little good it's done her lately. You know, it's just... Sorry, Chad, I got the yawns. When I talk too much, I get the yawns. One recession after another. Everybody's selling their old stuff cheap, but nobody's really buying. I have a delivery for 5 Dogwood Drive, and I can't remember ever seeing that address before. Now I heard I need to take a highway called the Zero. Rack saying black stripes when they say zero. On the actual word? I can't see it. It might be there. I might have a different setting than you have. So I met this young lady name of Weaver Marquez, and she sent me this way, and so here I am. Uncommon kind of place for an on-ramp, but that's what it's been like so far anyway with... Shannon says, what? Con now we've switched positions again. Conway says, Weaver Marquez, do you know her? Shannon says, so you saw her tonight. I know Weaver. She she was my cousin. I'm Shannon Marquez. Oh, you're the one who fixes televisions. That's right. Did she tell you that too? Of course she did. Weaver doesn't lie. 
One time when we were younger, she told me my dad had been in a terrible car wreck. There was crushed metal everywhere, and we'd be hearing it echo through the house for years, she said. I was just very upset, crying, and then my dad walked in the door, just come back from a trip to the junkyard collecting scrap metal to fish, fashion into wind chimes. She was my cousin, Rebecca says. I know, right? There's some weird pe past and present tense shit going on. Um, I was angry, but she said it wasn't a joke and it wasn't a lie. At the time, I thought she meant it as a riddle or a puzzle. But Weaver's not a puzzle. She's a mystery. Conway says, So maybe the zero is down here somewhere. Or what are you doing down here, Shannon? I talked to Weaver earlier this evening, too. Or, anyway, she talked to me. It's hard to tell if she's listening sometimes. Weaver told me I had to come down here to the old Hellcorn mine. She said I'd find... I'd find something I was looking for. Conway says, Where did you see Weaver? At my workshop. She just appeared. I hadn't seen her since... Well, a long time. It's not such a bad thing, you showing up now, all told. I'd rather not go down there alone. Your dog should stay up here, though. It's no place for a dog. I feel like all of my female southern voices are the exact same. This is an old mine. It runs pretty deep and tangled. If we're going to go down into it, find your on-ramp and whatever else, we've got to keep our bearings. I don't want to get turned around. Is this some sort of metaphysical on-ramp? I think it might be. Got some gear here to measure conductivity, frequency response, stuff like that. Maybe we can find a way to put a signal out ahead, do some analysis, and figure out what kind of topology we're up against. Conway says, topology, okay. Seabrack, Weaver is 100% a ghosty, Meg says. I think you're right. Shannon says, topology, that's the science of continuous space, my friend. The way this twisty maze of passages fits together. Yo, the writing in this, Megan, this is, uh, this is like, uh, been described as, like, David Lynchy. You getting any Twin Peaks vibes? Yeah, I am. Oops. No work tomorrow. No work tomorrow. We have to tell, we have to tell Blue to stay. Blue? Babe, look, I have a dog in the, and it's wearing a, uh, a hat. Blue, you can't come with me. You gotta stay. Blue? Stay. Ooh, that's creepy. PA system. That runs into the mind's PA system. You think it still works? Max says it's Log Lady vibes. Yes. <laughs> oh, Log Lady from Twin Peaks, man. Name a more iconic character. Only one way to find out. All right, give it a whirl. Uh, ch -ch -ch, uh, is anybody down there? Shannon says, nothing. Hmm. Oh, there's no power. Yeah, okay. Even when this old mine was up and running, it was tricky to keep stuff powered. You know, the miners used to have to pay just to run the fans and the lights. Yeah, they got paid in these shitty plastic tokens. Coal scrip, you know. And if you want to run the fans for a bit to clear the air up, well, you have to put a token in. Parents used to work here. So did Weaver's parents. I guess a lot of folks' parents worked here. Rebecca says, I still need to watch Twin Peaks. You do, because it's an incredible, incredible TV show. We still need to watch the most recent season. Um. Well, can we power it up? I bet we just have to free up some power for the PA system. Everything's rationed. Here, set up that lamp of yours, and I'll go unplug these ceiling lights. Conway clears his throat nervously. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh oh, oh shit. I heard the speakers back here crackle a bit. It's on now, right? Try, try saying something into the mouthpiece. Well. Okay, I hear you. We need to measure the echo delay time and figure out how deep the tunnels run. Just make some noises into the mouthpiece. Conway taps the mouthpiece. 
Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, tap the mouth mouthpiece. It's echoing. It is echoing. Conway knocks onto the table. Oh, let's hum a deep tone. What the fuck? Oh, dude, this is so cool. Conway whistles. Shannon says, damn, that's a long delay. These tunnels run deep. I bet some of them have ruptured or joined up with the cave system. All right, I set up my spectrum analyzer. Analyzer. So just say something to the mouthpiece. We can get a sense for how narrow the mine tunnels are. Don't be shy. Just say anything that comes into your head. Tell me a story about something. Or uh, what did you have for breakfast today? Here's a story. I used to work doing roof repair. My boss got a real big job out in Louisville. Should have taken us an hour to get there. But then a thunderstorm hit and it was too late anyhow. Ooh, that's creepy. Shannon says, got it. Looks like the tunnels are pretty cramped. Yeah, low ceilings. Hope you're ready to stoop a bit. Yeah, you're probably used to it. One more test. Just need to know if the air is breathable or if it's too thin or too dense. Sit real close to the mouthpiece and just breathe. I'll measure the resonance of your breath with the air in the tunnels. Just try to relax. Try to breathe naturally. Conway breathes and thinks about the road. Conway breathes and remembers a moment earlier in the day. I'm getting some pretty strong readings here. I think we're in good shape, but keep at it for a minute. Conway breathes and visualizes a hot meal. Conway breathes and relaxes as a peel of feedback and loose rock engulfs him. Holy shit. This is odd. Yeah, this is surreal. This is very real. Surreal. It's been described as like uh, as like magical realism. So speaking of the uh, the Hundred Years of Solitude reference earlier, I think that would make a lot of sense. Act one, scene five. It's got a lot of the like surreal or magical realist weird shit going on. So I think we may have just caused a cave in using the thing. The PA system. Shannon says, Jesus, are you all right? What the hell? Conway says, my leg is stuck. Shit, okay, I'm gonna pull you out. We have to get you out of here. There you go. Okay, are you hurt? Can you put any weight on that leg? Conway says, it's fine. Just try to stand up. Careful, I'm, I'm right here. Where's Blue? Blue stayed at the entrance to the cave, I think. Damn, don't worry, I've got you. That leg is in bad shape. Here, let's get you onto the tram. There you go. Now, let's see if this thing has power. There's some luck, right? Should be able to ride this tram right out of one of the auxiliary <laughs> auxiliary exits, if there are any. I think there are. Conway says, what about the on-ramp? What about Weaver? What about, what about Weaver? We'll just find the exit, then figure out what to do from there. That's our first priority. Controls are on your side. Let's get moving. Controls are on my side, huh? Uh. If I turn that off, it just gets dark. Ooh, okay. We are moving. Oh, we're going downhill. Yep.
Rebecca says that's usually what happens when you turn off lights. That's true. That's true. This is creepy as fuck. God, it's so beautiful, though. There's, oh, no. There's a turntable. Oh, here we are. This may be hard to believe. Hard for me to believe myself. But this whole branch was underwater last I heard. Conway says, how did that happen? Some careless miner or unattended machine bored through into an underground lake. Water came in pretty fast. A lot of folks got trapped in the tunnels. I only heard parts of how it went from there. Sanitized for the bereaved. You know how these big companies are. But there was gossip, too. The trap miners couldn't get the pumps going because the power was rationed, so they shut all the lights off. Even then, it wasn't enough. So I guess it was dark when they... When they died. Shit. Conway says, You lost some people down here, didn't you? We all lost people down here. Well, not all of us, but most of us. Doesn't matter now. Look, this old turntable's still wired up. Controls are dead, but I can use my signal generator to switch tracks. If the water hasn't damaged it too much. Or we can just keep headed down this tunnel. All this junk hanging around the turntables from the company store. Just junk, you know. Miners would buy it and use it to decorate the place. Or as landmarks, I guess. Hard to know which way is down here. It's all so dim and gray. This is crazy, dude. It's actually crazy. Shannon connects two clip leads from her signal generator to the turntable's electrical panel. Shannon is like power... Like, like science lady extravaganza. She's, she's crazy. She's got a million different machines in her pocket, I think. We're on the track between the animal bones and the rowboat, so... Uh-oh. Pendulum and casket or bat feeder and scarecrow? Uh, pendulum and casket. Seems dark. She's tuning her signal generator. Oh, the whole thing rotates. God, this is so fucking beautiful, man. I can go either way now. I can go back or forwards. Oh, shit. And it'll be a new area. Oh, we're coming up on something. stage damn it's almost totally intact I thought it would have been destroyed Conway says what is this place it's a recording studio basically kind of thrown together but when this mine was active a couple folk music archivists spent time here recording minor songs Really academic ivory tower types. None of the miners really talked to them much. They stayed at the margins, observed, took notes, and then sometimes they get someone on a lunch break to sing into their microphone. I don't know how I'm doing with this voice. I feel like I'm going back and forth. I guess the power company got some kind of interest in the project and gave the archivists some coal script tokens to pay the miners with for their songs. Did you ever come down here? I enjoy the voices. I'm just not sure how uh, how how steady they are. <laughs> Thank you, though. Yeah, I came here with my parents once or twice. Used to play music here, even when those archivists weren't around. It was a nice setup. Kind of rickety. Kind of dangerous, I guess. But 
I don't know, had a good energy. It was warm sometimes. Can I go back at all? I cannot go back. I must go forward. All right, cool. Well, we found that. We found that that direction. I wonder what else we'll find. Okay, there's the turntable, so let's go forward. Back to the intersection. I love games like this, man. It's just like, uh... It's just... It's just so different, you know? It's so outside of the normal experience of a, a game. There's a tape player. What do you like about it the most? The whole atmosphere? So far, I'm not sure, yeah. I mean, it's like a mix of like... Uh, I love surrealist, magical, re magical realist type stuff because I just think it like it lets you focus on details you wouldn't focus on otherwise, you know, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, and it lets you, uh, you can say weird stuff. Uh, you can say, you can say more interesting stuff just because everything's a little bit weird than you can in more realistic type games. I don't know. The sounds are cool, though. The whole art style is cool. This is a tape player. We'll see what it's about. A dusty reel-to-reel -reel tape player is stashed beneath the track, loaded with tape, but starved for power. Always. How's it going? Hello. How are you? Happy Monday. Welcome to Kentucky Route Zero. Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know, you can just be, you can just like, if you just take normal life stuff and twist it a little bit, uh, you can just say such, such more interesting stuff about our actual world, you know? Uh, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna switch stuff again. Slash. Slash, slash, slash. Um, let's change tracks. Slash, slash, slash. Let's do the Scarecrow one. Bregan, thanks for the five bits, man. How are you? All right, we're switching tracks, and we're gonna we're gonna go pop off down one of those. We'll go backwards first. The way this whole thing rotates is just creepy, man. Always, how's your uh, how's your Tuesday, how's your Monday going? It's Monday. This game is so pretty. I agree. I agree. It's creepy. It's weird, but I love it. I love it a lot. We're in the middle of a mine right now, and we're uh, we're going back and forth on a on an intersection. A dead end. Do you hear that? Kind of, a, kind of a muffled rumbling. Conway says, maybe we're near water. Could be. There was an underground lake around here years ago. I guess that's why they stopped digging so abruptly here. All right. I wonder what we're going to find on the other side of this mine. Let's go forward now.
Do you think Shannon is uh do you guys think Shannon is a good person? I don't know. Or is like a is a friend? I can't tell. Broken track. The tracks are all messed up here. This tram isn't going any further. I wonder what's down that tunnel. Yeah, you can turn the lights off. It's really weird. Alright, so let's go back to the scarecrow. Or the, uh... I think there's six total options here. What do you mean? Has she done something that makes you think she's not friendly? No, I mean more like not friendly versus unfriendly, but like uh, like friendly versus like otherworldly, you know? Um, like Weaver, uh, I would say is not unfriendly, but I also don't know that Weaver's friendly. And I wonder if, if Shannon is in the same boat, you know? Dex says, I just sat down and calculated some stonks. Turns out if you had God rolled GameStop, bought it at the lowest, sold it at the highest, you could have made almost $94,000 off of a $500 investment. Oh my God. Wow. Can you imagine? Whew. Always says, it's going well, other than a migraine. I really like the style of this game. Well, you gotta tell me if the noise gets too loud in this game, because it is... Sometimes a little loud. Stonks, by the way. Stonks, stonks, stonks. Yeah, I hope the uh, I hope the uh, migraine goes away. All right, let's go to Animal Bones and Robo, and then we have to go forward. This one we did backwards already, so we'll go back. We'll go forward. Stonks, indeed. Stonks, indeed. Yeah, I hope, I, I really like this type of game experience where it's just like, it's a couple, it's not a super long game. It's probably gonna take us three days of streaming, maybe five days of streaming. Maybe maybe more, but I don't think so. Um, there'll be a lot more stuff like this, hopefully in the future on, on stream. We've done it a little bit before, but I really like it. I like getting to switch it up. You know, if it's if it's your vibe, you can hang out. If it's not your vibe, you don't have to hang out. I started playing Hollow Knight the other day. I think you'd like that. Hasn't Duck played Hollow Knight as well? We were just talking about that. Ooh, exit. Give me the fuck out of here. Hollow Knight is definitely on my list of stuff to play. Shannon says, thank God. Okay. Conway says, let's go. Yeah, okay. I just... That tunnel where the tracks were broken, I'd like to take a look down there. Shannon's gonna go look, either way. Do whatever you need, I'll just wait for you here. Thanks, I'll be right back. Always says I get chronic ones. Birdcage? What's that mean? Um, I get chronic ones. Most of the time I have one, but I kind of forget about it. But thank you all. A paper tag hangs from the birdcage by a string. Canary, 25 tokens. Canary is sold at the company store. Did they also sell respirators? No bones in the cage. The bird must have been set free. Or maybe the cage was cleaned. There are cardinals at the Louisville Zoo and other birds. Ostriches, eagles, emus... No canaries. Too common? Too small, maybe. But they have starlings. Starlings aren't much bigger than canaries. What a weird game. Only in a game this weird do you have a chance to, to add that little weird bit right there. Tape reels? A pile of tape reels is jammed into the bottom of the tram. They must have been thrown on in a rush. The reels are unlabeled. The tape is decayed. We're doing a weird thing here. Have you never heard of a birdcage in a mine? I have, yeah, yeah. Canaries, canary in a coal mine is a whole is a whole thing, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because if the bird died, then uh, then you knew. 
uh, then you knew that uh, the arrow was unbreathable. They would die faster than you would. Um, yeah, it's just got weird dialogue. It's got really weird dialogue for this. Um, Duck says, Ryan, how come you decided to stream this versus making it into a YouTube series? Um, that's a good question. Partially, I think I could just probably do both. I'm gonna I'm gonna record this and then like stream it, and then I may I may take these and move them to YouTube. I'm not sure. Um, but I also had so much fun streaming Inmost with you guys, and it was like a really cool shared experience. Uh, and this is short like that. It kind of seems like a uh, a fun one to to share like that. Lisette and Iris' son Charlie talked about a piece of music he liked made with old decaying tapes. Is this going to be disintegration loops? Dude. This is on... Okay, I'm freaking out right now. If you guys don't know, I've talked about it way too many times. But one of the coolest pieces of music that I have ever... Uh, that I've ever found is a thing called disintegration loops. It's a series of four albums by American avant-garde uh, avant composer William Basinski released in 02 and 03 where you take tapes real tapes like he's talking about and you run them through the uh the uh the recorder and the tapes gradually deteriorated each time they passed over the tape head resulting in like basically a piece of music that like falls apart and that's exactly i'm 99 I'm sure that's exactly what he's talking about right here which makes me so happy Charlie had the most bizarre taste in music. Weird, noisy computer stuff. Where did he even hear that stuff? Louisville, probably, or college. He was a smart kid. It's a damned pity. So we don't know what happened to Charlie, but... Sounds like it was sad. Some notebooks. Notebook at the top of this dusty stack is labeled in black marker. The label is dusty and smudged, but it looks like it might say, Horses. Houses, maybe? Or verses? Crude and hurried handwriting. Lisette has immaculate handwriting. Pristine and measured cursive. Never a stray mark. The last several months, she filled out the receipts for each order. Since that young couple complained about the handwriting on the order slip, it's a carbon paper anyways. It's bound to wear away over time. If they're so precise about the records, they should put it on the computer anyways. The other thing I was going to say, Duck, is... Uh, I... I also feel like here on stream, we have two groups, right? We have YouTube group, people who watch this stuff on YouTube and, and people who watch this stuff on stream. The stream group ends up being very like, uh, is in my opinion, the group that would really, really appreciate this. I'll probably put it up on YouTube anyways, but we have these like smart literary people, like super smart, you know, thing like that. Fun fact, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen did this. Every time they recorded a new Galileo, they had to record it over some part to create the choir effect, and therefore it lost some detail. Oh, interesting. Ah, oh, that's cool. I think we can exit, but I, I hope we didn't just leave Shannon down there. I thought we were waiting for her. How did our dog and our truck get on the other side of this mine? Are they going to try and explain that? I just watched the movie last night. Is it the movie on, on Queen, the biopic, or? Blue drove the truck, obviously. There's a shack here. Let's take a look at that. Blue's coming over to say hey. Hey, Blue. You're my boy, Blue. Blue's a female dog, though. You're my girl, Blue. The cramped shack is lined with wooden shelves. Dusty stacks of tape reels and notebooks crowd the room, but a bit of moonlight filters through a window near the ceiling. On a small desk in the middle of the room lay three notebooks. Red one, labeled J. Marquez. Green one, labeled R. Marquez. The blue one is unlabeled. Okay. So, J. Let's open J. Red. Conway opens the red notebook. Ah, oh, there's Shannon. Pages are covered in disorganized notes, some written horizontally, others scribbled vertically into margins. A few pages are lined more evenly and divided into charts correlating seasons, lyrics, harmonies, coal, coal halls. Uh, I don't remember which one's which. 
Green one is labeled R Marquez. Let's open green. On each page is a delicately rendered charcoal drawing. Most are portraits of rugged faces. Near the middle of the book, there are a few drawings of a young girl in a miner's helmet. She plays along the minecart tracks, collecting pieces of wire. In one drawing, another young girl sits nearby, intently studying a book. That is Shannon and fucking what's her nuts? 100%. Ghost lady. 100%. Conway opens the blue notebook. Weaver. Weaver. The notebook is full of Greek letters and cryptic mathematical formulas. Near the back of the book, what first looks like it might be... Shannon says, oh yeah, this place. Conway says, I didn't think you were coming back. Oh, no, no, no. Let's talk about the, the notebooks. These notebooks are labeled Marquez. Your parents are the archivists? No. Oh, sorry, she says. No, Weaver's parents are the archivists. My parents are miners. Marquez? Dude, Seb, there's references to 100 Years of Solitude in this thing. 100%. 100%. Macondo. Yeah, it's a magical realist uh, type of game. How's the leg? Conway says, I can walk on it, but it's slow. 100% want to bet? Uh, uh, I don't want to bet. I'm not a betting man. Uh, uh, uh. Shannon says, well, I'll try not to get too far ahead of you. If you don't mind me... Nope, sorry. You don't mind hitching a ride, do you? I gotta... You don't mind my kind of hitching a ride, do you? Oh my god, I can't read this. I kind of got a lift out here. And I wasn't sure if, uh, when I'd be headed back. I can drive. Did she come out here to kill herself? Wasn't sure if I'd be headed back? What the fuck? Yeah, maybe that's best. Don't worry, I've been driving since I was nine. Uh, I still need to find the zero. Well, it's like I told you. Weaver doesn't lie. If she sent you here to find your on-ramp, this is where you should be looking. Or maybe you just weren't listening closely enough, or... Is that not exactly what she said? I saw Weaver at my workshop. That's up north by Lake Nolan, right at Wax and Peonia, in the back of a bait shop. Pretty glamorous, right? These are the times we live in. She's either up there or back at the farmhouse. Whichever you want to head to first, just let me know. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what those two options are. I think Blue just pooped. I think Blue literally just pooped. Either Blue just pooped or Blue was sitting. One of the two. God, this game's fucking gorgeous, dude. I'm so in love with it. Lisette's Antiques. I guess... Oh, nope. Lisette's Antiques. I guess this is your truck? This is my truck. Let's see what Blue has to say. How's it going, Blue? Oh, we could introduce Shannon. Blue, this is Shannon. Nice to meet you, Blue. I've got some dried banana slices in my bag. Would you like one? I don't really like them anyway. Let's get in the truck. Conway gets back in the truck. Let's get out of here. So Lake Nolan, Wax and Peonia. Lake Nolan up north, Wax and Peonia. I don't know where to to go to this workshop. There's the on road. Did we say that this was Lake Nolan? Does this game have multiple endings? I have no idea. Always we are going in as blind as we can. I have no idea. Union light. It's a great question. It's a great question. Nolan Dam Road. Wait, wait, wait. let's check these. Nolan Dam. Gap Hill. Okay. If I had to guess, I don't know if there's multiple endings, but there's at least multiple paths along the way. <laughs> if I had to guess, Grayson Springs, Wheeler, Priceville, Raider Hill. It's gotta be over here, right? Let's 
get out of here. Wait, there's the base shop. Oh, I'm on Peonia, and then this is Wax. There we go. We found the base shop. Conway and Shannon pull into the bait shop parking lot. Vaulted above the road on a thin steel bar, a handwritten sign reads, Live bait. Minnows, small, and also large for stripers, night crawlers, chips, and beer. A green flyer hangs loosely from a bit of masking tape at eye level. To the shop's right, a dirt parking lot sprawls unevenly into grass, and then eventually trees. Yeah, I'd prefer the blind. I'd prefer the blind duck. Exactly. Speaking of blind, Megan and I are going to play some Portal 2 this week, if you haven't heard. Um, I'm fucking stoked. Bait shop is closed. Enter the side door or drive away. Enter the side door to Shannon's workshop. Conway and Shannon walk around to the side of the building into the workshop. Walls are lined with cheap metal shelves loaded precariously with vacuum tubes, awkwardly shaped metal casings, coffee cans full of electronic components. Uh, okay. The solo and co-op campaigns are different? They are, apparently. Apparently they're very different. Shan it's like, it's a full-on separate co-op thing. I don't know. Shannon leads Conway to the back of the room where a few TV sets in various states of disassembly are set up on a rough wooden table. She flips the switch on the power strip they're all plugged into. And the TV sets tremble to life. Ah, uh, I could watch the TV sets. Hey, Duck, here's a question for you. As the resident Kentucky uh, Route Zero expert, I have a question for you. There's five different acts, right? Do you know about how long the first act takes? I'm trying to decide. Um, I know I'm sure it's very different, and I'm not sure how quickly I'm playing, but do you have two, a two hours for the first act of uh, Kentucky Route Zero? Conway watches the TV sets. A ghostly white wobble flickers along one screen in a rhythmic pattern. Another is just snow. A third, a small security monitor in the middle of the table, is oscillating between different shades of black. Ask Shannon about Weaver. Shannon points to a small security monitor on the table. The image on the screen is just black, but it seems to be fading slowly, almost imperceptibly, between different shades of black. You know what else this reminds me of? This is... This is, uh, this is, uh, this is Welcome to Night Vale. You guys know Welcome to Night Vale? This is Welcome to Night Vale. Shannon tweaks a few knobs on the side of the monitor, but the picture doesn't change. Stare at the security monitor. Conway stares directly at it. The screen is a cavernous black. It hums and swells at the pace of the tide. Conway loses track of the workshop's walls. They could be inches away or miles he is adrift on black water, traveling swiftly toward a rocky shore. There should be a lighthouse or a buoy by these rocks. It's too dangerous. Shannon switches off the power strip. Weaver is not there. Okay. Between one to three hours, depending on the act. Between one to two hours. Wait, wait, what's the guitar player again? A young man in gray stained clothes sits by the side of the road. He's playing a worn guitar. To his left is a blue mug, and to his right, a weathered dog. Let's listen for a second. Conway stands and listens to the young man's strums absently on the guitar, hums tunelessly, and occasionally mumbles a word. We're going to listen for another second. The young man whistles hoarsely, stops playing the guitar, looks up at Conway. He rambles for a few minutes about the weather, the dog, and his music, then returns to playing. As he walks back to his truck, Conway finds that he can hardly remember a word that the young man spoke. I just feel like if there was ever a game I was involved in making, this would be the game. And I don't think I would probably ever be that involved in making a game, but if I, if I did, this would be the game. Nope, wrong one. Shit. Let's go back to the farmhouse, see what happens. Act 1, scene 6. I think we'll I think we'll push through today then no matter what to try to get to the end of Act 1. It might be in 5 minutes, it might be in it might be longer. Truck.
He's really walking slow. Nope, what are you doing? Walk this way. Nope, come on. We gotta go up to the house. Yep. They are walking slow. Blue's gonna stay down here. To be honest, the fact that they made this game over seven years and made it as good as they did is amazing. I can't, I mean, on the one hand, I can't imagine working on anything for seven years. On the other, I think he's getting help now. Yeah, she's helping him. No, they made it over seven years, Rebecca. They released the axe uh, once every couple years. I mean, they probably made it longer than seven years. The first act was released in January of 2013. I think he means over, like, like, over seven years. It probably took... Wait, wait, wait. Let's go to the graveyard. There's nobody buried here, you know. It's decorative, I guess. Oh, shit. There's nobody buried here, you know. It's decorative, I guess. Or it's art or something. I don't know. Conway says, What are the names on the headstones? Nowakowski, Padilla... I don't know those names. Maybe the people who lived here before? I know when they bought this property, it already had a house and everything. Maybe they have some other symbolic meaning. Oh, and look at that headstone. Mar <clears throat> Marquez. I used to think that was from my parents. Now I don't know. No, you're good, Rebecca. Uh, always says it's almost play-like. Is that what you meant? It's almost play-like. Like a play. I mean, the dialogue options are cool. The, the whole... Yeah. Shannon stopped walking. Both of those names are family names for me. Spoopy. Spoopy. This owl is pissed. Let's go talk to Shannon inside. Yeah, Act 1 was January... 2013 act five was january 2020 yep so this is where she was yeah makes sense this is where this was where weaver and her parents lived they took out a bunch of loans you know and had this place built do you have any debts i never really had any c oh wait oh that's a beautiful this right here is an incredible example of why i love this game already do you have any debts well, I do owe some people some apologies. That's a type of debt, right? It's something that holds up, you know, that is held over you. I owe some people some apologies. Well, you're lucky that's all you owe. My parents were like that until the company store found a way to get to them. For my dad, it was tokens to run the fans and air purifiers. And for my mom, it was canaries. Two solutions to the same problem, but they sure sounded different. Weaver had that too. A lot of it. All tuition. She said she was a mathematician or something? Yeah, she studied some esoteric stuff about using math to translate between Spanish and English. I think eventually Weaver put those math skills to work on all the red numbers in the family checkbook and got a clear sense of just how hopeless their situation was. So she left. I guess she just drove away in the middle of the night, woke up in the morning, and the car was gone. Never came back. Until tonight. Yo, Blaze is back. Hi, Blaze. How's it going? Thanks for the five bits. Um, All right. She seemed really focused on that old TV. No, let's ask this one. Were you happy to see her? I don't know. It was so sudden, and it wasn't like a reunion. She just appeared. She... No, that's not something you see every day. That old TV right there, well, that is a damn antique for you. I had a model like that in the shop once, but I had to sell it off to make rent. Most painful decision I ever made. Say, you mind if I open it up? Looks like the dials are all corroded, and the screen is leaking light a bit. Come on, I bet Lysette would never forgive you for letting a specimen like that fall into disrepair. Let's do the TV. Sure. 
Hi, Blaze. We're, uh... Ooh, buddy. The TV portions like this are weird. I get chills. Oh, yeah, these tubes are all messed up. Look. Nope. Look like they've been in a swamp or a cave or something. There's moss growing on this one. That's okay. I have a few spares in my bag here. Here, I pulled this one out of an old computer monitor. Just needs to be recalibrated a bit. Okay, that oughta... Should be seeing something now. Are you seeing anything? Hey, that looks dangerous, what you're doing there. Damn, okay. Here, I think the contacts are dirty. Now, don't go telling my customers I clean off all old vacuum tubes with spit. There, just gotta turn it north, south, and... Let's hope we need to remember what it looked like before. I hope I remember what it looks like before. The barn's gone, but there are some horses. Kentucky Route Zero. You see that sign? truck going by. Ominous drone intensifies. End of Act 1. So when we wake up tomorrow, will we be in the TV land? Or will we be back on the map? I hope we have to go back on the map at some point. Sweet. That's going to do it for our portion of the stream today. I'm going to read this quote out loud that Duck just wrote. He says, just going to give you my favorite quote about this game. Imagine for a moment that the next great American novel was created in the 21st century as a point and click adventure video game, give, video game, or a uh, point and click adventure game woven out of Southern Gothic fiction, magical realism, and a techno mystical understanding of hyper reality. Imagine it is a tragic ghost story about the American dream where the ghost is the American dream. The tragedy is that it keeps haunting America because it doesn't know it's dead. Yo, I love that. Soon we're going to have the entertainment. Yep. Look at this. Oh my god, it's creepy. So limits and demonstrations is what I just played, right? Wait a second. So I think the act itself might be the number, and then there's this. Is that right? Duck, do you know? Is limits and demonstrations the interlude thing? Should I play that today? Brack finished uh, act one as well. Like, do you know how long it'll be? I'd heard that there were interludes. This is probably the interlude, isn't it? Hmm. I'm just gonna Google real quick. Just how long it would be. Um, I think they're quite short. All right, we're doing it. We're doing it then. I don't want to stop anyway, so we're doing it. Limits and demonstrations. Let's get it. Ooh, this looks like a like a uh, a setup in a in a museum. Oh my god! Title card: Basement Puzzle Number Two, Artist, Sunset, and Horse, 1976, Plaster and Wire. This is Emily. Emily says, What do you think she means by a puzzle? Can you read the covers of these books? 
Oh, these are our three. These are Emily, Ben, and Bob, I'm sure. Yeah, it's kind of hard to. I wish we could get a little bit closer. I don't think they're real books. I don't remember their, their, their things at all. No, they're real. Look, that one says... No, you're right. It's just scratched up cardboard. Maybe it's a puzzle, but there's no right answer. That's kind of sad. Okay, horse, sunset, books that are fake books. Got one right here, too. It's got some lines. Title card, overdubbed Nam June Pike installation in the style of Edward Packer. Magnetic tape, handheld tape, playback head. Speaker system, voice of the artist, computer synthesized speech. Oh, I read about this one. It's interactive. What's it about, Emily says. It's an installation by a different artist made of audio tape. Then she took it and recorded over all the tape with her own sounds. You can listen to it by running this tape playback head all around on it. Let's try Let's try it out. I think you start in the middle. Bob drags the playhead back along the tape. The woman's voice issues unsteadily from the speakers. The woman's voice says, We start in the middle. Donald and Joseph are in the hallway. I am in an office. The walls are lined with filing cabinets. A few drawers hang open. The door is ajar. A massive computer looms in the corner. There are some punched cards on the floor. A synthetic voice recording spliced awkwardly into the tape lists out options in monotone. The options are examine cards, rotate 30 degrees, leave the room, or activate the computer. Um, let's examine cards. This is weird. Bob moves the playback head to another strip of tape. Encoded in the holes punched through these cards is a first draft of the Poetics subsystem. I can't read punched cards by sight. Donald can, I think. Anyway, this version was pretty underwhelming. So now I can activate the computer. Let's do that. Another strip of tape. So loud. I love it. I'm now holding two punched cards. On one of them, Joseph has scribbled a note. Caves. The other is blank. To insert caves card, rotate 11 degrees and advance 2 inches. To insert blank card, rotate 95 degrees. Let's do caves card. We're on a dirt trail in the park. Or, well, it's not really a trail. It's a trail! It's more like a tendency. There tend to be fewer plants here on the path we've been walking. I love that a trail is more like a tendency where there tend to be fewer plants. <laughs> So it's Donald and Lula walking along a trail. Lula says, now we're walking at the edge of a massive hole. The dirt gives way to mossy rock as the ground sinks into darkness. Joseph and Donald are following a rope down into the cave. They have computer equipment tied to their backs. So do I. To enter the cave, rotate 65 degrees left and advance four inches. Ben says, that's the only choice? That's the only choice? Yeah, that's the end of that one. So, 65 degrees, 4 inches, dot, dot, dot. Lula says, that's the last trip, so everything's down here now. The final resting place. Don't be so morbid. To remember a fond gesture, rotate 180 degrees and advance 23 inches. To regret a harsh word, rotate 12 degrees. We'll hit remember. It's morning now. I'm in the car. I'm driving to work. This is the last recording I'll make on this tape, and then I'll drop it in the mail tomorrow, and then... Who knows? I've been recording on this tape for 15 years, I think. A lot of other things happened, so... Here's the story. When I met Donald and Joseph, they were both students, and I was in a band performing on campus. They came to my show, and then we met at some bar and had a few drinks together. Joseph wanted to impress me, so he stole a metal cocktail tumbler and gave it to me. We got kicked out, wandered drunkenly until morning, and finally ended up at a diner. Now I use the tumbler to store extra pins on my desk. Rebecca says, are we supposed to understand this? I don't, I would not, I would not hold it against yourself to understand that much. My understanding is like, so here's the levels we're operating on. In this extra section, we have the three D&D &D players. They're in a museum. They're looking at uh, 
different uh, exhibits. One of the exhibits is of a tape recording that has been run over a bunch of times. And you have, it's a little bit like choose by, choose your adventure. And in the story of that tape recording, there's three people. There's like Lula, Donald, they're doing some weird shit. Um, they're dropping computer parts in a cave for some reason. Lula says, I'm almost out of tape. I guess I'll just let it run out while I drive. These bits are a bit more world building and theme. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um... No instructions, Emily says? No, that's the end of this tape strip. I don't think we ever reached this long one at the top here. Is it cheating to skip over there? Uh, I won't tell a soul. So we're going to skip around on this tape. I like that, I think. Donald says, think of our work, our research. You'll die in these damn cold caves. What about those men? You know they'll come back. We'll go deeper, that's all. They'll never find us. Did you hear their voices? They're not... They'll find you, but not me. I'm going back to the surface. Stop. Your stupid fight is ringing through the whole damned cave. Joseph is right. We can't stay here. I'm leaving too, but I'm not going back to the surface. I'm taking my station wagon, and I'm heading down the zero. You'll be lost forever. But we need your voice for the machine, Lula. It only recognizes your voice. I'll send you this tape when I'm done recording. I'll put it in the mail, and then you can see what your damn machine does with it. Ben says, oh. That was a weird one. Wait, what's he doing? Oh, dude, is he walking over to it? I thought he was walking over to it. What the fuck is this one? I miss going to museums. I can't tell what it is. Is that a vending machine in the middle? Title card is Visage. 1984, Unknown Media. Emily says, I find this profoundly, I find this profoundly moving. What do you think, Bob? Slice a visage to build a visage, a puzzle to its owner. Ben says, what? It's a poem I read. I think, nope, that's the wrong voice. That's, that's other guy's voice. It's a poem I read. I think it was written by a computer. Sounds like it. I think it's lovely. Always misses going to museums, too. Yeah. Alright. Should be one or two more uh, pieces of uh, art. I don't know how many, but probably not more than five or six. Four to six. Vertex Texture Fetch. Tree, television, and suspended cathode ray tube. The picture on the TV? What is that? It's a lighthouse? No, it's a weather vane or a windmill or something. Is it a lighthouse? Okay. It's a strange one. Electric drone and spinning coin. All right, I think one or two more. Spinning coin, suspended, corrected for, correcting for angular motion. What a lonely image. It feels so strangely alive. Didn't you have one of these? Didn't you have one of these, Ben? Oh yeah, I did have an old microfilm reader like this. Got it at a garage sale. Couldn't figure out what to do with, do with it. That's my whole shed. Just a bunch of weird obsolete electronics I thought I might use. At least it's not in a... Nope. At least it's not in a landfill. Yeah. Who knows what kind of chemicals they put in those things. What's the half-life on microfilm and weird old electronics? I guess everything gets broken down eventually. Thankfully, my city does a lot of interactive art outdoors. Oh, really? I haven't been to a museum since a little bit before quarantine. Okay, I think that is, uh, I think we've done this one, right? Limits and demonstrations. Oh, we didn't click on the title thing. We should have clicked on the title thing the whole time. Wall text says limits and demonstrations. 
Alula Chamberlain Retrospective. Marking the first major public showcase of her work in over 20 years, this retrospective ex exhibition of work by pioneering installation artist Lula Chamberlain comprises a diagonal slice through time, place, and form. The pieces on display here were individually debuted over a period of 35 years display designed in Chamberlain's various homes and studios between her beloved Mexico City and her native Elizabethtown. Where's Elizabethtown? Is it Kentucky? They represent a, a range of scale and impact from the intimate warmth of vertex texture fetch to the infamous visage, the latter of which requires a vertical clearance of over 30 feet. Yet these works share a confounding legacy. In each of their debut exhibitions, they were nearly impossible to dis install. Galleries and museums balked at the scale, power requirements, and highly skilled labor involved in maintaining these works for display. Some of their debuts collapsed under their weight of logistics, only to be successfully executed much later. It is in Kentucky? Okay. And so, just as they describe the outer limits of Chamberlain's range as an installation artist, the geographical edges and vertices of her itinerant home life, and the beginning and end of her distinguished career, the works on display here also trace the extremes of our capabilities and the frontiers of our patience, as both viewers and exhibitors. Are we capable of viewing these works of mint as they were meant to be viewed? And do we even want to be? Always oh, says we have an exhibition right now that's part of our winter festival. I'm trying to exit over here. Yep, we already did this one. Yep. Exit. I think that's it. Meg's home, by the way. <clears throat> Bob says, yeah, I guess I'm ready to go. This show is exhausting. I need to get to work. I'd like to look around a little bit more. Now let's just get out of here. Uh, I need to get to work anyhow. And that is the interlude done. Okay. And now we are ready. Now we are ready tomorrow to, uh, to take on Act 2 and the entertainment. What a start so far. Oh, man, I'm so thankful we got the uh, the tech issues figured out, at least vaguely. Um, if my camera is a little bit off from my voice, just because for some reason my computer cannot handle playing this game correctly, um, that'll be all right. But, yeah, I'm having a blast. Thanks for being patient with me, guys, today, and thanks for and thanks for hopping along on a very weird game. Um, very weird, but I'm very, I'm very into it. We're going to uh, we're going to switch over and just chat for a little bit. That was awesome. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you liked it. If you did, I would really appreciate a like on the video. And otherwise, we'll see you next time.